Hello allies, today's topic is that of a book review. We are not, in fact, technically reviewing a book, we're reviewing a play, but we read a play rather than um, went to go see it. It's The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. It is one of the funniest plays I've ever read. Seriously, it's amazing. If you haven't read it, do. I actually reviewed this book back on my own YouTube channel ages ago, so you can watch that review if you want. I'm going to be talking about some particular things from this book, rather than doing a general review, because if we all do general reviews, that's boring. So, I want to talk to you about Bunburying, or being a Bunburyist. Oscar Wilde, in case you didn't know, was a homosexual. He was a screaming queer. He was gayer than the 4th of July. So it's easy to see that maybe Bunburying may be a metaphor for another activity other than pretending that you have a brother in the country. Let's not pretend that Bunbury is only a step away from bumming. And that's quite clearly what's going on. It's very funny, there's lots of double entendres in this. There's so many fantastic one-liners in this. I've re I've done I've done like readings of a couple of them that I'm gonna insert at the end of this video. I think it's really funny. Algernon is one of my favourite characters in books ever. Algernon is just hilarious. He's a really funny character. And the bunburying thing, just sort of like I go off to the country and go bunburying. Algernon is sort of like a metaphor for secretly being gay, as Oscar Wilde was. He had a wife and children, but he also had a boyfriend and and had sex with rent boys. Have you ever seen the film Wild, starring Stephen Fry? Uh, as Oscar Wilde. It's really good. It was uh, You should watch that film if you haven't seen it. It has Jude Law in it as his boyfriend. Um, I can't remember his boyfriend's name now. He did have a name. It also stars a, a young Orlando Bloom as a rent boy. So it wants not to like about the film. Stephen Fry puts in an excellent performance, by the way. And oh, Bunburying. It's such an obvious metaphor for, for, for homosexuality. It's wonderful. I think it's great that he's throwing in these double entendres. And it just makes the thing funny, you know? Lady Bracknell is fantastic. There's one line which is something along the lines of, um, she's interviewing Ernest or Jack as to, um, if she, he could marry her daughter. And she goes, do you smoke? And he goes, mm, yes, I must admit, I do smoke. Oh, good. A man must have an occupation. <laughs> she's like, okay. Another line is really good. And it's about... <laughs> He said, um, he goes, what are your politics? And he goes, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't really have any politics. I'm a liberal unionist. And she goes, oh, they count as Tories. They dine with us anyway. And it's so funny. So, so funny. A lot of this novel, especially Algernon's character, seems to just basically say how crap marriage is. It's wonderful. I'm going on like sort of the marriage themes and the, and the relations themes, by the way, in case you didn't know it. It's just like, especially in the really early bits in like act one, Algernon is ripping into marriage so much. And there's this one really funny bit about Mrs. Something, but they, they, they go visit her husband had just died. and she, she looks quite transformed. She looks about 20 years younger. <laughs> I heard her hair has gone quite blonde since her death. <laughs> it's just very funny. It's a very clear sort of illustration of Oscar Wilde's sort of view on marriage and whatnot. And it's just really funny. And if you've not read it or seen the play, do both of those things. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Did you hear what I was playing, Lane? I didn't think it polite to listen, sir. I'm sorry for that, and for your sake. I don't play accurately. Anyone can play accurately, but I play with wonderful expression. As far as the piano is concerned, sentiment is my forte. I keep science for life. My dear fellow, the way you flirt with Gwendolyn is perfectly disgraceful. It's almost as bad as the way Gwendolyn flirts with you. I'm in love with Gwendolyn, and I've come up to town expressly to propose to her. I thought you'd come up for pleasure. I call that business. <laughs> My dear Algy, you talk as exactly as if you were a dentist. It is very vulgar to talk like a dentist, when one isn't a dentist. It produces a false impression. Well, that is exactly what dentists always do. Now go on, tell me the whole thing. May I mention that I have always suspected you of being a confirmed and secret Bunburyist, and I am quite sure of it now. A Bunburyist? What on earth do you mean by a Bunburyist? <laughs> Cecily, who addresses me as her uncle from motives of respect that you could not possibly appreciate, lives at my place in the country under the charge of her Admiral Governess, Miss Prism. Where is that place in the country, by the way? 
That has nothing to you, dear boy, and you are not going to be invited. I may tell you candidly that this place is not in Shropshire. I suspected that, my dear fellow. I have bunbred all over Shropshire on two separate occasions. Now go on. Why are you Ernest in town and Jack in the country? <laughs> Literary criticism is not your forte, my dear fellow. Don't try it. You should leave that to the people who haven't been at a university. They do it so well in the daily papers. What you really are is a bunbreist. I was quite right in saying that you were a bunbreist, and you're one of the most advanced bunbreists I know.